Well, good evening to everybody. It's a pleasure to be here. Uh, firstly, playing for all of you. And second, because right now I feel like a kid in a candy store. I got all these wonderful guitars from, from Michael Gott. And really, I mean, it's, 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 a, it's a good feeling. So this first uh, tune I just played, it was, like a, it was like a medley. It was a mix of different Hawaiian traditional melodies. Um, like the first one, for instance, was a very famous piece called Moana Chimes. Okay, the chimes is something that in Hawaiian uh, they do like this. Okay, and it's, it kind of like reflects the sound of the, of the waves and the sea and the ocean in Hawaii. Um, and there was another melody mixed all mixed in there. Uh, this piece coming up now is a piece called Kolohe, which in Hawaiian means something like somebody like a rascal, you know, like a naughty little kid. It's something I composed when I was living in Hawaii, and I was inspired by all those black and white movies from the 1930s. So it has that jazzy flavor and Hawaiian style.
Thank you. Um, but let's change a little bit the, the style here, since uh, one of the beautiful things of this Weissenborn style guitars is that they are so versatile that you can play so many different styles. Um, for instance, the next, the next song is, is something like I have composed. Like, it's based on one of the famous songs uh, by a bluesman called Robert Johnson. And I call this blues the RJ blues, like Robert Johnson blues. And I just got inspired on the, on this, on the legend of this man, which was a, a man from the States who wanted to play the guitar and play the blues. And he is said that he sold his soul to the devil in order to, to play the guitar. And we don't know if it's true, but Mm, the truth is that it worked because he became one of the most well-known blues players even until today. So this is a piece dedicated to this man, Robert Johnson. I used to live for quite a few years in, in the United States, in, in California. And I get the very much welcome in, in an African-American family who were very well related to the world of jazz and blues. And, and I was very lucky because in a way it was like having like a, a godfather in, in this kind of world and in this kind of music. 
Um, until today, I'm, I'm very thankful to this family because I got to travel to many places and got to hear many stories. In one of my journeys, uh, we went to Missouri, and I got really, I fell in love with, with the prairies there and the nature. So this is a kind of like a country, bluegrass, half-half kind of tune that I composed just remembering, you know, that, that, that moment when I discover all, all the beauty on, on the state of Missouri. So it's called just basically Missouri Prairies. play now. <laughs> okay. So, 
following the same story, um, one good memory I have uh, when I was deep into the blues world, I was uh, hanging out in, in Kansas City with one old man that used to tell me a lot of good stories about the blues. And that is where I learned all this relationship between the bluesmen and the African Americans and the train. Since the train was actually a, a sign of freedom for, for African Americans that were in, in slavery, because some lucky ones would escape and would jump on the train and just get away. So we find so many blues songs talking about the train. Um, as somebody that wanted to play the blues, I have to make a train song. So this is actually what I did. This is just a call, a, a train song.
And there was also the first time I got into a real country music club back in the States, my first month there. And it was quite an experience. I mean, for somebody that is not from there and that really likes that, that kind of music, etc., cetera, was, was quite nice just to see everybody doing the, the dance, the typical country dance and, and all the live music sounding. And inspired by that, uh, I, I wrote the next piece, which is like a bluegrass style of piece. And I just called it like country dance, for that matter. So here's a little sample of it.
Okay, there is one man who made history in Hawaiian music, and it's been an inspiration to probably many of us in this room. And there is a Hawaiian guitarist by the name of Solho Opi. He set up quite a wonderful style, and, and, and he really made the Hawaiian guitar and the Weissenborn guitar just reach the, the golden years. And of course, I have to make something for him. So um, when I was in Hawaii, I realized that uh, a lot of the 1930s music had a lot of inspiration on different Latin American rhythms. Um, so I thought this was quite a, quite a nice thing. And I wanted to make my, like my own version of like a, it's like a Hawaiian tango the way that maybe Soho B would have played it. <laughs> that was the idea. Now the results, you'll tell me after I play. <laughs> so this is a, what I call the tango a la hope e. But uh, if there is one inspiring um, person or human being 
in Hawaiian history, uh, that is the last queen of Hawaii. Her name was Liliuo Kalani. Um, she was the one that was betrayed by part of her uh, government. She had like a mixed government. She had Hawaiians, but she also had some Americans and British consulars. And it was this that uh, betrayed her to take over Hawaii. And she spent the last of her years uh, in house arrest. So the only thing she could do there is just play music and compose songs. So she actually composed some of the most important and most loved songs in, in, in Hawaii, including the famous Aloha Oe, which is the anthem of Hawaii. And in this way, she died, just in her room, not being able to see how her people were free and how they lost their own country. Um, so the next piece is something I, I compose uh, in memory of, of this wonderful woman, which was the last queen of Hawaii, Queen Lilio Kalani.
Now I remember when I first arrived to Hawaii. Um, I didn't have much, and I just got there. And first day I arrived with the airplane, I went to this uh, mall, small mall that was there in, in, in the town of Kahului. And I found this place, they, they, could, um, they sell tents to camp. So I got one, took my guitar, found a nice beach, and just camped for a, for a while until I could find a place to live and things like that. When I found a place to live, it was the saddest thing in the world <laughs> because I was enjoying so much just camping by the beach, waking up early in the morning and just enjoying the, the nature there and everything. And in one of those days uh, is when I composed this piece, which I call Kalani. Kalani is a, it's a Hawaiian name they use it for people, but it means the heavens. So it was just dedicated to all that beauty of, of the ocean and, and the sea, you know, when you look far back in the ocean and you don't know where the ocean ends and the sea and where the ocean ends and the, and the sky starts. So that is Kalani. <laughs> So this is the last one. And before I go, I want to 
give some thanks. Okay. To all of you for coming here, to all of you for enjoying and liking so much this style of music and these types of guitars because they are not so common and and it's wonderful to see more and more people learning this instrument and these styles of music. And my thanks especially, well, first I should say to our friend Sebastian, which is around here, because he's responsible that I'm here today because he was the first one to contact me and, and put me in touch with Michael. And of course to Michael for organizing all these things. I mean, he's not only a wonderful guitar maker, as you can tell already, but he also is, is an amazing person that is putting all these music lovers together and, and, and bringing them here to, to learn more about something they like and to share all this all these passion, you know, between all of us. So I will go with this one. This is a Hawaiian ragtime and it's called Wiki Wiki, which in Hawaiian means like quick, quick, okay? Um, that's it. So aloha to everybody and I hope you enjoy it.
I think I'm out of guitars. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what can I do? Let's see. Um, hmm. Let's try um, this one. <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna put two pieces together. Uh, one is a beautiful song called Bali High. Um, and the reason why I like it so much is because in the lyrics, it's talking about the island people, how the people from the mainland, from the continent, is always like criticizing island people because it's like it's an island, there is nothing much, it's so lonely, there is no people, and, and it's not like that, first thing. But second thing, this song is beautiful because it talks about that, but it, it says something very interesting because it, on the lyrics, uh, they are comparing to the island, this loneliness to, to many people who live actually among many people, but it's like if they were living on an island, which unfortunately happens a lot. So anyway, I think it's like a beautiful message to, to realize, you know, that sometimes we just get too isolated in the middle of everybody. And the second one is a very special song because uh, it's Aloha Oe. Mm. I mentioned this song before. It was written by Queen Lilu Okalani. Um, it's a song that he composed when he was in this house arrest on the last years of her life. And, and Aloha Oe was like a greeting. In this case, it's, it's, it's a goodbye kind of song. The lyrics go something like uh, Aloha Oe, like I'm greeting you until we see again and um, until we see each other again. So anyway, Aloha Oe. Malamapono, you take care and um, I hope you enjoy these two pieces too. 